we go, that should be it. Good evening. Yeah, it is working, I can see it on the other screen. It's uh, Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. That young lady over there is Calf, so make sure you say hello to Calf in the comments. It is Saturday the 23rd of May 2020. Um, what's cracking everybody? Hopefully you're all doing well. And it looks like we've got to say a special happy birthday to one of our regulars, that is uh, Aletta Liano, who's in the chat and is one of the moderators. So come on, let's hear it for Aletta. Let's have some, uh, let's have some greetings in the chat. Okay, so let's say a quick hello to some of you that are actually in the chat tonight. We're going to talk tonight about the new stuff which is coming out from Intel. We've got the 10th gen chips, which have just hit the shores. We've also got the Z490 motherboards as well, which I don't know whether there's so much hype for that. Is it a thing? Or are you excited for it? I don't know. Let's discuss it. We've also got AMD are uh, fighting back. They come out from the corner, giving Intel a few more blows. And we've got some more chips coming out from AMD in the very, very near future. Some upgraded versions, some uh, refinements on the seven nanometer process. Also, we've got a little bit of news on the new Navi cards, the big Navi, or so-called big Navi, which looks like it might be a little bit disappointing for those of us in the kind of budget to mid-range arena. But more on that a little bit later. There's been so much stuff going on. The B550 chipsets, we're starting to get um, more information trickling through about those. Seen some pictures today on ASRock's site, and it looks like they've got about, I think it's seven or eight different models of the B550 board available, or will be available shortly. I don't know, I'm still a little bit unsure. Are these gonna to be too expensive? The B450 was a personal favorite of mine because of its features, but mostly because of its price. For what you got, you got a lot of bang for buck. But it looks like we might not be seeing that for much longer. It looks like all motherboards across the board pun intended, from Intel and AMD, motherboard prices are creeping up to some crazy points and it's really weird. You can, all, well, you can spend more money on a motherboard than you can on a processor. How is that even possible? What a weird world we live in. Anyway, we'll be talking about all that kind of stuff and a little bit more later on in the show. Show, that sounds weird. Anyway. I can't type hello to everyone, there's too many. Yeah, Kaf can't type hello, she said, sorry, because there's too many. So we've got Angry Doges in the house, we've got Ghost Adder, we've got Caleb, Skystalker, Supernova Wolf, Varad, uh, who else have we got? Paul Bakewell says hi. Aletta's in the chat, obviously. Captain Meets Adventures. Uh, Toked Man says, I am so hyped for Mike, can I get an amen? Amen, brother, or sister. AKA Liam says hi. Dave Burns is in the house also. Mark MC, aka Liam. Did I say aka Liam? I think you did. I think I did. Maybe I'm having deja vu. I'll find out when I watch this back. Uh, Brabant's Bo... J... I don't know. Whatever that is. Yeah. I apologise. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, yeah. Brabant says I'm fairy but now on main channel. Get it? Gotcha. Understand it. Just call me Brab. Okay. Okay, Brab. So, I got YFW. We've got apostrophe or comma, whatever it is. Milch Monster is also with us. Click Tech Kev's in the house. I think that is pretty much everyone. So, let us say straight out of the gate. No messing around. No foreplay whatsoever. Straight in with the full on. Saying, personally, I don't mind spending $300 for a good motherboard like my X570 Unify. $300 seems like a massive, massive amount for a motherboard. I know it's American dollars, which are slightly kind of less value, but weirdly approximately the same. I don't get how that works these days. But $300 for a motherboard seems like crazy. It really does. Like if you're into overclocking and that's your thing and that's your hobby, totally get it. You need the best possible board to get the best quality components to get the most out of your chip. But for a lot of people, myself included, I don't know, I'd rather maybe spend hundred pounds, 150 pounds, really kind of at the upper end, and then maybe spend that extra 150 that I've kind of kept back on going to the next tier of chip up. But then I'm not into overclocking massively. I just want to put things on, if I work, get on with my job and hopefully get it done as quickly as possible. So I see all points of it. And also from OEM's point of view, the A320 chipset, the B450 chipset were really the manufacturer's mainstays. They went straight in for those. I don't think I've ever seen a pre-build or 
most of the custom builds these days, very rarely do you see them with a top line board, like an X470, X570, uh, Z490, well, Z490 is a little bit of a different kettle of fish because you haven't got a lot of choice with the 10th gen at the moment, so that is kind of like an, an, an anomaly. Let's say it's an, 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 I can't even say that word, it's not a thing. But anyway, you get what I mean about it. So Tokeman says, for me, it's all about the aesthetic. If it's like 250 for a really hot board, I'll do it, but it's very subjective. And that is totally it. I was looking at some of the ASRock boards today. So we've got the HDV is making a reappearance. We've got the Pro 4 making an appearance. We've got the Steel Legend making an appearance. We've got the Tai Chi making an appearance. And we've got other ones in between. There's the RG board. There's also, um, I can't think what the other one is. There's another one as well, but I can't quite think what it is. But there's a load of different boards. But essentially, the HDV, the Pro 4, and the Steel Legend look to be essentially exactly the same board, just with diff different levels of trim on them. Um, obviously, we don't know, we really don't know until these actually hit the shops, are available to get some hands-on testing with. And it does seem that ASRock, I'm sorry if I'm picking on ASRock at the moment, but ASRock are kind of my go-to brand generally. But they've done that thing again where they've said it's a eight phase VRM or 12 phase or 16 phase or whatever it is. And you look at the board and you think, that is not, that's three phases with a doubler or four phases with a doubler or six phases with a doubler. It isn't what they're saying it is, which I think is gonna end up being an absolute nightmare all over again as it was previously. But we'll see what happens when they hit the, uh, hit the shelves. A letter says, so true, looks are as important as performance. The fittings for my uh, open loop cost about the same as my motherboard. It is insane the amount of money that we can spend on PCs these days. It really, really is. I'm and sorry, Meta. Sorry? You said it's insane how much we... Yeah, we... we well, yeah. It's insane how much people pay for PC components. But good news is on the horizon. AMD, like we said, are fighting back. And they've just announced to manufacturers... Well, to retailers, rather. Not manufacturers, because they are a manufacturer. But they've told retailers to reduce the price of the uh, X9... The 3900X take it $100 off the price. So that makes it an amazingly attractive processor. So depending where you are in the world at the moment, I think over here, they're getting on for the region about 420, 400 if you're lucky. It, some odd sites pop up every now and then with like 390, 380. But generally looking around the 400 plus mark. So if that starts hitting the shelves at 300 plus, that is gonna be an amazing processor. But I suppose with the Ryzen 5 3600 now starting to appear for the 140 mark, 150 mark, it kind of makes sense in the lineup to reduce that 3900X price point. So I guess that's what it comes down to. Is it now, because we've got all this new stuff coming out, obviously Intel 10th gen, new motherboards, we've got B550, new motherboards, we've got new AMD chips coming out. Is it now time to start binning off these old PCs or are you possibly more going to be like me and trying to get in on the kind of just below that generation and pick up some really, really good bargains? Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm, I'm always after the bargain. So if I can see something which has been reduced and reduced heavily because it is technically kind of old stock, then I'm totally going to be up for it. And actually, I have done that very same thing this week. Not so much with PC stuff, but actually with webcams. Webcams at the moment, getting off topic just briefly. What is wrong with the price of webcams at the moment? unbelievable now in the moment i've currently got three webcams on on this stream i've got the logitech uh, h what's that? nine no, sorry c920 i've got the uh microsoft life cam hd 3000 which i picked up this week i've also got a life cam 4000 which is in the laptop built in and what else have i got yeah that one that one that one and i've got the main camera so i've got four cameras on at the moment and yeah the, uh, this thing, 20 quid. For a webcam at the moment on the market, 20 quid, unbeatable. You can't get anywhere near it. Even Amazon are selling these for like nearly 80 pounds, which is insane. The Logitech C920, which is kind of like the go-to webcam, those are hitting 70, 80, 90 pounds, which is ridiculous. Like on Prime Day, you could pick them up for, I think it was, I think it was myself and uh, Welsh Tony One, picked them both up for, I think it was 30 pounds, was it 20 pounds or 30 pounds we paid in the prime sale? I can't remember what it is. Yeah. Often they're normally around about the 50 part. Yeah, they're normally around 50. 
and I'm sure they went down to like half price, so it was like 20, 25 pounds. So absolutely insane. Mental, mental prices. So let us say in the uh, I'm planning to buy the 3950X the second it drops to $600. Totally. And it looks like it probably will happen. Although we've got those other chips coming out. We've got the 3750 coming out. Also a 3850. Maybe even a 3650 coming out with the X prefix. Or maybe an XT prefix. With prefix? Suffix even. So we're going to have these new enhanced 7 nanometer plus parts. Which are going to come in and hopefully knock the prices down a little bit further. So. That's, uh, that is pretty cool. Kath says, I'll give you up to James Davis. I can't even see that far up. There we go. James Davis says, when building a PC, how important is it that you use a static band as I'm just waiting on mine to come, <laughs> but I have all my components. Truthfully, if you're building, just get yourself a cardboard box. You don't have to be too kind of crazy about it. Obviously, if you're stuck in the 90s and you're wearing a shell suit made of nylon or something, and when you're moving, you can just feel that static in you, don't do it, it's obviously not a good idea. But get yourself a cardboard box, something which is relatively static free. You can build your PC on a static box. If you're really, really concerned about static, if you get your PC case, plug it into the mains and just touch the chassis every now and then, and then any static in your hands will go through the chassis and go back to the earth in your wiring. Well, assuming you're in the UK or American, sometimes I've got that kind of earth leakage thing. But as long as you're not kind of scratching your head when you're building it, well, I'm all right because I'm going to hair. But if you've got longer hair and you're scratching your head and you're generating static, that's clearly a bad idea. Just use a bit of common sense and you should be absolutely fine. Again, if you're worried about static, like do it barefoot on a wooden floor, you should be fine. Uh, Dave Burns says, did AMD need to do much fighting? The 1300X killed the 10th gen <laughs> on workload. It certainly did. It absolutely did. Um, yeah. Intel have kind of, I don't know why they've, they really, really need to pull something back. The processors, yeah, they might be doing okay, but they're much higher clock speeds. They're using a ton more electricity, like 125 watt parts. It's almost like when the Core 2 Duos were out and Core 2 Quads, and then you had the AMD FX range, and AMD chips were just using so much more energy and higher clock speeds to try and keep up. And it's completely flipped on itself. It's, uh, it is kind of crazy. Uh, quick hello to Brightek. Brightek's in the house. How are you doing, mate? Nice to see you join us for the chat. Say hello to me. Gaff says hello. I've got a bad <laughs> yeah. me up. She can't type. The cat attacked her just now and she, they, it's destroyed her hand, so not good. Uh, yeah, as Dave Byrne says, just don't go rub a load of balloons first. That is definitely, uh, definitely wise advice. Yeah, just be sensible with it. Alessa says, I've built 150 PCs and never wear a wristband. I've got to be honest, I don't think, I'm trying to think, I don't recall ever wearing a wristband apart from maybe in a kind of uh, comedic way. But I don't think I've ever done one. I've never had any any issues. Most of the time, the static is, it's like the old fashioned thing. Like years ago, PC components used to be really, really susceptible to static. Whereas now most motherboards have got built in static protection to some extent anyway. And you've got multiple layers of PCB, which are normally covering up things like tracks. Memory, I would say, is probably the only thing you might be slightly more sensitive to. Memory sticks, because it's quite fully exposed, the chips are there, bare on the board, and you're touching it directly. Those are probably going to be slightly more, <coughs> slightly more problematic, if anything. But again, most motherboard, uh, sorry, most RAM these days, it's kind of like your RGB RAM, and it's got heat shields on it. So that does give you another layer of separation between you, the static, and the RAM itself. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Mungo Blakey says hyped for Z490 motherboards. I got to be honest with you, I um, I'm not quite sure about Intel at the moment. I've I, I genuinely love technology, all this stuff. I love it, it's great. But the Intel stuff at the moment just doesn't do anything for me at all. And it's pretty sad, really. AMD have got an amazing chipset, an amazing lineup of processors. I mean, there's pretty much anything you could want. If you're on a really, really low budget, there's something for you. If you're a middle-aged person who just wants to play a few games in, in, after you finish work, there's something for you. 
If you're a video editor, there's stuff for you. If you're a high-end content creator or doing visual designs, all that kind of stuff, there's something for you. They've got something at every level. There's a platform available for everyone. And it's so, so nice to see. But unfortunately, Intel, I don't know, it just seems they've lost their relevance. And I know the, the reviewers recently, I've seen it from quite a few reviewers over the last few days, they're all trying to be kind of quite positive and optimistic about these new products from Intel. But seriously, I don't know why. I guess they're sponsored to some extent, so they do have to kind of try and put a positive spin on it. But realistically, in the chat, let us know. Is there anyone in the chat who is seriously, seriously considering at the moment actually buying an Intel chip and an Intel motherboard? Please do let me know, because I really want to know why. I really can't know, sorry, I really can't work out in my mind how you can justify that decision at the moment. I guess there may be some really, really specific niche areas where a certain piece of software works so much better with Intel. But this week we've had an amazing update to Adobe Premiere, long, long overdue, which now you get hardware encoding with both Nvidia cards and AMD cards without having to tweak anything. It literally just finds a card and does it. And I've noticed my render times go down well, massively. Uh, a traditionally an 11 minute video would probably take about six to seven minutes to render on my system. Whereas now, an 11 minute video will do in about two minutes 50, if that. So it's had a massive, massive knock on effect. And for those of you doing like high end content with loads and loads of transitions and different feeds and all that sort of stuff, your time is going to be so much better spent if you have a decent graphics card, either AMD or Nvidia, it's going to work so much better. Which is great news for everyone. ClickTech Kev says, I wouldn't buy the latest Intel. I'm with you there, brother. No reason why you would. Stuart Stevenson says, not a chance. AMD all the way just now. It's a shame that the graphics cards are just a little bit, they're just not quite there yet. They're good, but they're not great. If we get that in the next uh, generation, the big Navi, which it doesn't look like we're going to get, it looks like the, the high-end Navi now is going to be about 10% faster than the 2080 Ti, which actually, if you think about it, is probably all that the 3080 is going to be because that traditional kind of NVIDIA thing where every generation or every kind of product segregation is about 5 to 10% in, in real use. So it could be good. It could be good. We'll have to wait and see. Uh, Gamer7138 says, this Intel series is quite pathetic. If you do price, compar price to performance, AMD is better. This is just a refresh of the ninth gen with some more cores. Exactly. I couldn't, couldn't put it better, really. That is exactly what it is. It's doing what Intel have always done. From the 7000 series, really the 6000 series, 6000, 7000, 8000, 9000, and the 10th gen, they're all pretty much the same thing, just very, very incremental refreshes and still on that same process, which is pretty poor. There's something weird going on in my YouTube studio, but I'm going to ignore it. But it's flashing away like crazy. That's technology for you. Uh, Steve Darby says, go into the red team from an Intel 2700K, Sandy Bridge to the Ryzen 7 3700X, with the Aurorus X570 Elite, uh, should I wait for the B550 model? That is the burning question at the moment. Do you, do you get the bargains now, potentially? I can see the B550s being pretty much almost the same price as the X570. I can really see that happening. The boards themselves, power delivery wise, look to be very, very similar. So I would be surprised if there's a massive difference in price. I'm hoping there is because otherwise the kind of the middle platform for the budget gamer and well, the budget user is pretty much dead and buried. But then on the flip side, do you go out now and buy yourself a B450 board with the prices being as they are? Or if the B550 comes out and is really expensive and not that much better, is that gonna then push the prices of the B450s up even higher? And in these Covidian times, it's just getting worse and worse. Prices are going up. Power supplies, power supplies are still insanely expensive. It's, um, I know it's about supply and demand, pun intended, but they are just really, really expensive. It's, it's very difficult to get a decent power supply these days for sensible money. Uh, where are we? 
Intel. So how many times can we get these suckers to buy the same 14 nanometer parts? Exactly. It's, uh, it's just recycled garbage. Graphics cards have been doing it for years. There was uh, the Radeon RX 480, then became the 570, then was the 580, then the 590. Three generations of essentially what was exactly the same card, just with a few tweaks. So it's not as if anyone's really immune from it. It does happen at various levels. There was a, an NVIDIA card way back, I'm trying to think which one it was, which did basically the same thing. I think it was the 8800 GT. And then that got refreshed and then eventually it became the 250 GTS. So it went through various, basically, refreshes of exactly the same thing, just with different naming on it. And I think the 250 GTS then became the 450 GTS. So it just went on and on and on for years. It was insane. Chris Solis says, same old Intel, just too expensive. With very expensive new motherboards too. Nothing new here, not worth it. I wonder though, how, after so many years, did they manage hyperthread in? Yeah, it's almost like they kind of, um, they kind of knew that hyperthreading could be done, but they deliberately disabled it purely to give that market segregation and also just to push you up to the next level for the, the high-end parts, I suppose it would be. Uh, Gamer7138 says, I bought a PSU for 80 euros, 600 watt, 80 plus gold. I uh, wish I had a bit more headroom. 600 watts is still pretty decent these days. I think you've done all right there. Uh, Clicktech Kev says, been looking at PSUs today. Really tough to find good price deals. It really is. Really, really is. Alessa says, no B450s. I already have two X570s. I'm also not going to buy any Ryzen 4000s. I'll wait for AM5. Yeah, that's uh, another waiting game. DDR5, possibly. Who knows? Bruno Nugaria. I think I've pronounced that badly. Says hello, everybody. Uh, Brightex says price gouging is really bad on PC hardware right now. It does, yeah. The uh, the whole COVID thing is really. Some retailers and manufacturers and distributors are really kind of tightening the thumb screws, and I guess they're seeing it from their point of view as well. So if they've got kind of monthly targets where they've got hit month on month, but then they're getting less stock coming in, so they've got to try and make more margins on the stock they've already got in their inventory. So naturally they are going to try and increase prices to a point where people will still be like, okay, I'll buy it. I'm not overly happy, but I need it. I'll buy it. They're not putting it up to a point where it's kind of, no, I refuse to buy that. They're putting it to a price where it's just below that threshold, which has been really clever for the whole industry because the whole PC industry is still booming. There's a lot of companies out there still making a lot of money and selling a lot of equipment, but at the cost of our wallets. But luckily the governments have moved in on pretty much most continents around the world and either given us cash incentives or furlough money, whatever it is. So a lot of us at the moment are kind of not working, getting free money from the government and it's like, oh, I need, I need a PC because I'm at home. What should I do? Oh, buy C PC stuff. Oh, it's really expensive. Ah, but the money I've got from over there, I never earned it. It's free. So I can afford to spend a little bit more money. That is the whole way that these stimulus packages work. And they seem to be working really, really well. Sorry, that was a little bit uh, political. I do apologize, but it's true. That is the mindset. Not so much for female. Yeah, homeowners are in a different ball game altogether. Oh, well, my YouTube studio has just reset itself. Hopefully, I haven't lost the stream. Never mind. Oh, sorry. That's better. Okay, so uh, Ricardo says I hope to go for a B550, Aurora B550 Pro AC. So, for those of you who don't know, that's the, uh, the Pro model, which has got built in Wi Fi, and I think it's got a Bluetooth model, uh, module as well. With a Ryzen 5 3700X, excellent choice. I've uh, upgrade my old FX6300. I think it's enough for me in GPU RTX 2060 Super. Ricardo, sounds like a really nicely rounded system there. 26, uh, 2060 Super, great card, um, AAA titles, no problems at all. Easily hit 60 frames per second in pretty much everything, even with RTX on in a lot of cases. Again, resolution dependent, but still can be done. John Grammaticus says, money is never free, lol. 
No, we all pay for it somewhere along the line. I, uh, I envisage that here in the UK, we've got a thing called VAT, which is a value added tax, uh, like a sales tax in the States and that kind of thing. And in the uh, Australia, I guess, and I guess elsewhere as well. But in the moment, we're set at 20% VAT. I would imagine that's going to hit 25% before the end of the year. I would be amazed if it didn't, but we'll see what happens. Uh, interest rates are kind of down to pretty much zero. So there are negative interest rates at the moment. So savers are completely screwed. Uh, you get no interest for your savings whatsoever. It's, it's a mess. It really is a mess. Tokeman says, anyone else watching this in 2020? Uh, <laughs> I hope so. Uh, Brightex got to go. Stay safe. Bye, Brian. Bye, Brian. Catch you later, mate. Gamer7138 says uh, he bought a Be Quiet cooler and it runs fully overclocked with low temps, 50 euros extra was worth it. Now actually, a um, little bit of a sneak preview here. I think I'm, I'm allowed to say that, Kath? I don't know what you were going to say. Um, about our new product coming in from a supplier, beginning with an N. Yeah. Am I allowed to say that? I'm allowed to divulge. Okay, so coming up, after we did our um, kind of group test of budget coolers, it got me thinking that it's fine for the budget side of things, but what about if you want to spend a little bit of money? What can you get as far as air cooling is concerned? So after careful consideration, because I'm the kind of person that I don't like spending a lot of money. You guys know this. If you're regulars, you know that I'm tight like duck's bottom. So I reached out to uh, our friends at Noctua and said to them, would you mind sending us some review samples? Because I'm genuinely interested to see if it's actually worth spending a lot more money on PC cooling and what you get for your money. And uh, luckily they, uh, they took a look at the channel and they said, yep, yeah, what are you interested in? What would you like? So that kind of opened up all kinds of possibilities and avenues. I could have gone for the um, ND15, the big mama, but I thought, no, because that doesn't fit in with me, doesn't fit in with my ethics and all that kind of stuff. I wouldn't necessarily spend that kind of money on a cooler myself out of my own pocket. So by reviewing it, it seemed a little bit kind of weird. So I went for the 12. So we've got the uh, NDH12. I don't even know the part numbers. I think it's the NDH12. It's the new version, which supports both Intel and AMD sockets. It's uh, like an updated design. So they've sent that to me for review purposes. So we will be taking a look at that and I definitely will be putting it against some of the other budget coolers to see if it is actually worth doing, if it makes sense. What? NHU12S. Yeah, NHU12S is the one that we're getting sent. So we're gonna check that out. Also, I'm really interested to put it up against Arctic Freezer's uh, 240 AIO because they're pretty much in the same price point. So it'd be interesting to see water versus air who wins now i think we probably know who's going to win over the kind of short-term battle but over the long-term battle i think it's going to be uh, quite a close one to call but anyway that's going to be coming up very shortly so we'll be checking that out so yeah hopefully it's uh <laughs> dave burns says nuller master knee quiet or norse air <laughs> yeah all of those So yeah, I'm uh, I'm genuinely interested to see. I've never, hand on heart, that side, hand on heart, I've never owned a Notchua cooler. So I've seen reviews, obviously, and I've heard people raving about them, but I've never actually used one. So it's going to be interesting for me to see what it's like, the user experience, um, ease of assembly, ease of use, all that kind of stuff, and actually if it makes sense, which is what this is all about. So looking forward to that. That's going to be uh, that's going to be pretty cool. Uh, Xbox Gamer says, I bought a 212 Evo Black Edition for £29. That's pretty decent. That's a good price. Uh, and it is better than my AIO HATI cooler, which cost me about $70. <whistles> Not bad. Uh, so Tenjal says, uh, so I got the D15 two years ago. It's great. Excellent. Looking, I am, I'm genuinely looking forward to it. Uh, Dave Burns says, hey, Glenn, 1981 crew in the house. Who's that? I was like, oh, yes, Glenn. Evening, Glenn. 
How are you doing? Glenn's working on things, he's just listening to you. All right, okay. I'll try not to pour, I'll put you to sleep. Uh, grotesque Subhuman. Fantastic name. That is a good name. Are you actually, I can't really see from your thumbnail because it's quite small, but are you actually both grotesque and subhuman? I'm intrigued. Your comment is, uh, not your art quality, but I do think they are a bit overvalued due to the name. Well, that has always been my opinion that there's brands like Cooler Master, there's brands like Arctic Cooling, there's Thermal Take, of course, and hundreds and hundreds of other coolers on the market, all of which effectively are based around the same technology. You've got a certain size fan through a certain size uh, fin stack, and there's only a certain amount you can do with that technology. And that's why it hasn't moved on in the last 10 years, really. We've got the same kind of setup. They've added more heat pipes, obviously. They've improved the noise of some of the fans due to the bearings, etc. But essentially, they are working on the same principle. Airflow through metal. So it's going to be really interesting to see if it is actually worth doing it. I am looking forward to it. I really am. David Aitken says, It turns out I have to watch films with the missus and not listen to computer chat on a Saturday night. We'll catch up tomorrow. No problem, David. Have a nice night. I hope you enjoy your movie. And make sure the popcorn has got a hole in the bottom. Techman says, Varad it is. I don't know what that means. Matthew Day says, Asaska Nero 3 versus the Snowman. Wonder which would win. I forget which one used to be the same stack as the Snowman. A, there are so many coolers with very, very... There's not really a lot between them. And it's really difficult to test a cooler in a kind of a realistic way. The only way I would say that you can test it in a realistic way is to use it in a realistic way. So uh, run it idling, run it as you would normally with like your Outlook open, your Chrome tabs, your Discord chat. Oh, by the way, even into all the Discord crew, hope you're having a good one. Uh, other things that are open. So most people on a kind of in a normal basis, they, that's what they've got open. You kind of got your emails, you've got your web pages, your YouTube page, Discord chat maybe, Messenger chat, Facebook, all that kind of stuff. So that is kind of like, almost like your idle state. That's your normal workload. So if it's quiet during that and it does the job and it keeps under temperature, you're pretty golden. Then you switch into gaming mode. So gaming is a very, very different kettle of fish because obviously different games stress different parts. Some games are CPU heavy, Counter-Strike Source, that kind of thing. CPU heavy. Other games, uh, I was going to say Far Cry, but that's CPU heavy as well. But you know what I mean? There's some games which are more GPU heavy than CPU heavy. So it's very difficult to get a kind of a realistic, real use case scenario, which is why a lot of people do the stress tests to see what kind of worst case scenario is going to be. But again, worst case scenario isn't always reflective of real use because different cases, different setups, air cooling, water cooling, all these kinds of things. So it's really, I've, I've been racking my brain over this, trying to work out what is a good real life way of testing coolers and components. It's actually really, really difficult. And if you put your mind to it, it is actually a real mind bender. But anyway, we move on. Uh, Kevin says, I'm waiting for the uh, Scythe Fuma 2 to come back into stock in the States. That's, yeah, that does look like a good cooler to be fair. I have seen that um, on a few channels. Interesting piece of kit. I think we actually reached out to Scythe as well, didn't we? I think we did. Yeah, we did. I think we reached out to Scythe to see if they want to be uh, if they want to be interested. We've also uh, reached out to another company. Um, name escapes me. No, can't think of what it is now. Gone. If it comes back, I'll let you know. <laughs> but some interesting stuff from uh, certain companies. Lots of new companies spring up all over the place. So we're reaching out to a few people to get some more bits and pieces in. Because at the moment, we seem to be littered with AirPods. Everybody wants to sell us AirPods. I know it's that time of year, spring, okay, summer. Fake nails this week. Fake nails and hair cooler, curlers as well. It's like, it, have you actually what? Yeah, that's the funny thing. They send the email. Hi, I am Hugo from China. Clearly, your name's not Hugo, but let's leave it for now. Next thing is, we really love your channel and we've watched lots of your videos. Great. Would you like to try our hair curler? Clearly you've not seen any of our freaking videos. <laughs> what is wrong with you, you lunatics? <laughs> oh no, I do love those default emails, they're great. 
Dennis J says, uh, I bought a, uh, I bought on March, or in March rather, uh, MSI B450 Tomahawk Max with a Ryzen 3700X. And it is super for rendering, but graphics cards may be slow. GTX 1050 Ti graphics cards are so expensive. Uh, yeah, 1050 Ti is a bad card as well. Uh, value for money wise, buy a second hand card. It doesn't matter what country you're in, which territory you're in. If you're buying new, don't buy a 1050 Ti. Get a second hand RX 580 or second hand 1060 even or 1070. Much, much better option. Nugent says Zalman. Zalman is one of those companies that haven't seen doing anything for a while. They seem to be very, very quiet. They used to be all the rage back in the early 2000s. You couldn't go anywhere without seeing a Zalman Superflower, Superflower Gold or one of their other like really crazy fans which were pretty much guaranteed to chop bits of your fingers off if you put your fingers anywhere near the blades. They were terrible. What are you doing, Kat? Oh, bleeding still? No, not quite. Okay. Uh, grotesque subhuman says with Ryzen's, uh, I don't think you could go crazy with a quality AI cooler. You can't overclock them a lot. That does seem to be the, uh, yeah, that does seem to be the thing. And it'd be interesting to see what happens with these new 3000 series parts and the 4000 series parts of uh, AMD. Whether overclocking is going to be pretty much a thing of the past with the precision boost overclock, all that kind of stuff. Uh, this is actually, there's an interesting question uh, that I haven't haven't sort of uh, seen this before. So this is from So Hom Jukherli, Jukherji. Sorry if I've uh, completely obliterated your name, but that's what we do here on Mike's Unboxing. It says, is it true Intel CPUs have more micro stuttering in games as compared to Ryzen's? I'm going for a new build with a 3600 with ASRock Gaming Phantom 4, XY70 with my existing Corsair 40, 2400, oh. 2400 megahertz RAM. I'm going to get there in the end. Um, I don't know. I would have thought micro stuttering would have been more of an AMD thing, being that traditionally Intel cheap CPUs have a slightly better um, frame time or minimum frame time or minim <coughs> minimum frame rates than the AMD counterparts. So I would have said AMD would have been more likely to micro stutter because of the kind of increased lower end of the frame times. I don't know. I've not heard that before. Maybe someone else can answer in the in the uh, the comments. Dave Burns says I can vouch for the sixteen sixty super being a tremendous card. They actually the sixteen sixty super. If you're in the UK, there's a, a gigabyte one on sale at the moment. It was on Hot UK Deals where I tend to go all the time, and it was under two hundred pounds I think for sixteen sixty super, which seems like really really good value for money. Definitely worth checking that one out. John Grammaticus says something dodgy went down with Zalman. The old CEO was naughty. Ha <laughs> ha. Oh dear. I'm going to have to Google that one later. Uh, where are we? Mungo ba Blakey says Hi Mike, do you reckon the 450 Tomahawk Max will be good enough to run Ryzen 4000 CPUs? I, who can say for sure? We, we really don't know what is to be expected from the 4000 series. I would hope that they're not going to be that dissimilar from the 3000 series in all reality. And in theory, they shouldn't be massively. So I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be. And being that they're doing the backwards compatibility thing, that would make it, in my mind at least, that there's a very high possibility it's going to work fine. But until it hits, we've got no idea whatsoever. Sorry to be um, <laughs> sorry to be that vague, but we really don't know. And actually, talking about vague, let's talk about keyboards briefly for a minute, because keyboards is always one of those things which people either get really, really triggered about, or they couldn't care less about. And it doesn't seem to be that kind of middle ground anymore, where people are like, mm, okay, whatever. It's either no, 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 or ah, people get really triggered. So. Because I quite enjoy triggering people and getting feedback and comments and all that kind of stuff. And also because it was cheap. Hey, 
Mike's unboxing. This week, I picked up one of these. This is a belated birthday present, almost, to uh, the love of my life, Catherine H. Churchill. <laughs> Her name's not H. Churchill, it's just, I put H's in the middle of names, like Jesus H. Christ. That's not his middle name. I don't think, do you reckon Jesus had a middle name? Probably not. Anyway, I'm digressing. So this is the uh, Microsoft Wired 600 keyboard. This cost me £8.50 in the United Kingdom on Amazon. Got it on Prime, so I didn't have to pay any postage or delivery. But this is a wicked keyboard. It generally, generally is. I still struggle to find something I dislike about this keyboard. Now, if some of you are probably going, oh God, it's a membrane keyboard, it only costs £8.50, it's going to be rubbish. But, Caf's existing one, which is, ironically, exactly the same model. How long have you had that? A thousand years. A thousand years, at least. Give or take a few years, but nearly a thousand years she's had that keyboard. There's nothing even wrong with it, apart from a cigarette burn. Yeah, there is literally nothing wrong with it. It's gone through two house, no, yeah, two house moves. Three. Sorry, three house moves. It's been through various um, pandemics. We had the swine flu, we had the bird flu, we got the COVID. It's been through all of that and it's still going strong. The only damage to it is Calf is a smoker. And unfortunately, at some point, a, uh, a ember, a burning ember, fell onto the keyboard. On letter V. And has destroyed part of the letter V. But still usable. Other than that, completely usable, albeit a little grubby, but... Very grubby. <laughs> very grubby. Could probably do with disinfecting and some alcohol wipes. But other than that, it's still going strong. It's building up my immunity. Yeah, it, that is Calf's immunity bucket. She dips, her, dips her fingers on there, picks up a load of germs, and it's like, smears it all around, <laughs> gives it all that. And that is her immunity boost for the next month or so. I don't need no vaccines. Don't need no vaccines or jabs, just I that. <laughs> Lick Calf's keyboard and you'll be good. <laughs> we, should, we should trademark that. Definitely have a queue outside the house. Free <laughs> keyboard licks. <laughs> Oh dear, you can tell it's a Saturday night. Anyway, this keyboard, for me personally, has got everything that I always want. Now, one thing that I always like to do is to get hold of the calculator. Because you know what it's like, you ask someone something, or somebody wants to know the VAT, or whatever something is, a calculator is always easier than trying to do it in your brain or write it down on a piece of paper. So the first thing you do, oh, calculator. You look on your desk, no, I haven't got a manual one, so I'm going to need to find it on my computer. It's in there somewhere. So you have to type in Colk, then click on the link, and then it opens up. So it's about five or six different key presses, plus the kind of thought process to go through it. Whereas this has got hardware buttons on. Hardware buttons, everybody. Not one where you have to press shift in function or function in control or whatever. It's a dedicated button, an actual dedicated button, which will open up the calculator, which me personally, I love that. I absolutely love it. And my mute button. Mute button, amazing thing. If you're a parent, you've got a family, you're watching popcorn, whatever it is you're doing, that mute button is very, very important, as is the uh, escape button and all that kind of stuff. But having that hardware button for mute, volume up, volume down, play pause is amazing. So it's got that, what else has it got? I can't even remember what's going on, I'm so excited about it, I genuinely am. Calculator button, media control buttons, and actual function buttons, which what's you don't have to double up. Absolutely, mate, that's the escape one. No. One of the function ones. Oh, play pause. It's got play and pause as well. Because my that has worn off. Amazing. Play and pause, volume up and down, mute, calculator button. I am happy as a proverbial pig in muck. This is a great keyboard. It's low profile, it makes virtually no sound. So if you're doing some late night video editing or you're doing some late night answering YouTube questions or Discord or whatever it is, you can type away to your heart's content. Not going click 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 with your blue switches or red switches going absolutely mental. It's great. It's Microsoft, so you know it's just gonna work on pretty much anything you ever plug it into. Eight pounds fifty. I'm sold. That is why I had to get another one. Even though CAFS is still working, this is gonna be a suitable replacement because basically we're gonna have people queuing up outside licking that one. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna nail it to the wall outside so they can just walk past and just drape their fingers across it to pick up some uh, some DNA. Some friendly bacteria. Click Tech Kev says, does it have spongy keys? Kind of yes, but not not really spongy. It's a really difficult one to explain. They're kind of 
they're responsive. So you click and you feel the click. There's a resistance, okay. there's resistance down to that kind of bump and you know you've typed it. I can, that is one of the fastest keyboards I can type on. I can type like an absolute demon on that thing. I've got my uh, Game Max keyboard there, which has got the mechanical switches, which is, I think is the red Optimus. use. And that thing just drives me insane because I'm never typing away and it just gives me a headache after a while. I just want something a bit quieter. So I might even have Caps old keyboard. Build your immunity. Build my immunity. <laughs> anyway, this is a reminiscent thing. This keyboard has been on the market now for like best part of 20 years since the kind of internet revolution. This essentially stayed the same. All they've this changed. Another one, don't we, that was more rounded. I preferred that. The Microsoft one. Internet keyboard. That was the next one. That I was that, that, is, one. that was great. But this one, the only thing they've essentially well. changed is they've changed the Microsoft logo because obviously Microsoft have changed. The packaging has changed. These used to come in a red box, now they come in a white box. Microsoft Much like that. The logo's got See, mine's the same as that. That's the, no, that's the new logo. Slightly more, it's a different type font. Oh yeah, slightly. Anyway, <clears throat> you get the idea. Matthew Day says, that just reminded me the batteries were still in my old wireless keyboard. That is another thing. It's on a USB cable. You don't have to change batteries ever. Not in the entire thousand years of owning it. It's amazing. I love it. I do love it. Aletta's in there. I have a five pound generic mouse from Walmart. Perfect match for a $4,500 PC. <laughs> it's keyboards. I, I'm, nice I'm always at that point. I do not, I do not get keyboards that don't have hardware physical buttons on them like the whole 10 keyless thing if you've got a small desk get a bigger desk don't skimp on your keyboard you need those buttons especially if you're using it for actual work if you're using it for gaming just buy a bloody console be done with it get rid of the whole lot chuck it out throw it in the sea piss off Greta upset her immensely because she got a face like a smacked ass anyway but buy a full-size keyboard full-size mouse get a big desk be a PC master race user. Anyway, <laughs> I'm all right. Calm down. Calm down. Anyway, so I am going to do a full review on that, and I love it. I genuinely do. Anyone who says that mechanical keyboards are better, maybe they I are. Wish I, could get the same I love mouse. it. Eight pounds fifty. That is amongst the best eight pounds fifty I've spent in a long, long time. What was my mouse? I missed that now. The mouse. Oh, your mouse was the Microsoft Laser Mouse Three Thousand. No, Microsoft IntelliMax Optical. Microsoft IntelliMax Optical, if they remade that now for this modern universe without being both buttons on the same side rather than the ambidextrous design where there's a button on each side, that was a perfect mouse. I would quite happily buy another one of those today. Two of them. I want one. Uh, yeah, buy two. Calf can have one as well. <laughs> but let's get back to some of these comments. Um, Matthew Day says, before this thing, I tended to grab... Uh, two to three pound charity shop keyboards. Amazing way of keeping up your immunity. Pick up all that bacteria from the previous user, dice it down, get rid of all the DNA off it, and you're all good. But yeah, cheap keyboards are generally the way to go. As much as I like spending money on a nice looking keyboard, like this MSI keyboard behind me, this is the G, I can't remember which model it is now. I think it's the GH30. Yeah, GH30. So it's just a a regular membrane keyboard or oh I'm breaking stuff it's a mechanical keyboard but it looks nice and it matches with the rest of the build so for that I can understand it it was about 30 quid so it's not a massive amount I'm stuck it's not a massive amount of money oh it's all going wrong it isn't a massive amount of money it really isn't but still £8.50 bargain I could probably use that for a couple of years and then still sell it for a tenner. Dave Burns, if I turn my keyboard upside down, I would feel I'd have I'd feel the bin. <laughs> yeah, turning <laughs> turning your keyboard upside down. Now, even if you're a clean person, actually, if you're a clean person or you think you're a clean person right now, do me a favour, grab your keyboard, flip it upside down, and tap it on the desk. Even you clean people out there, there's going to be some detritus coming out of that keyboard, I guarantee it. There will definitely be crumbs, there will definitely be um, skin cells, other things that we're just not even going to mention. It's going to be bad. Just do it. <laughs> oh dear. 
Right, I'm going to have a slurp of my tea in a minute. I should be back on the beer, actually, because I'm not taking my tablets anymore, so I can get beered up, but I don't think I will. Mm -mm -mm. No, because they're not cold, are they? Oh, they could put some ice in, I suppose. That'd be good. <laughs> Dave Burns says, I turned my keyboard upside down and two sesame seeds fell out. McDonald's, you've been to McDonald's. Or Rivita's. Yeah, or Rivita's. I'm hoping it's probably McDonald's. Although that has been shut for weeks. Yeah, this is true, yeah. Jabant says, the Microsoft Sidewinder X4 is not mechanical, but feels great to type. Ooh, Sidewinder X4 keyboard. I didn't, I've not seen that one. I did have the Sidewinder X3 mouse. I've actually had three of those, I think. That was a really, really good mouse. Sorry, YouTube. Gamer7138 says, my keyboard looks like garbage, but I haven't cleaned it in six months. Uh, Letta says, I vacuum my keyboard every week. Do you know what? This is no word of a lie. How often do I vacuum my keyboard, Kath? Every time you vacuum? Every time I vacuum. Kath, how often do I vacuum? Every day you're not working and I do the days you do. Every day I'm not working and Kath does it the days I do. My keyboard is vacuumed literally pretty much every single day. Why don't you do mine? Why don't I do yours? I don't want to get rid of all the bacteria off it. <laughs> and also, I don't want to clog up the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Brab, Brab says, uh, where's the scones? Oh, scones. Gamer713 says, I vacuum my keyboard too, but it's the residue on the keys itself. Yeah, that is uh, that is definitely a thing. No, homemade burgers, okay. Uh, Glenn says, I have a Cherry MX Board 1 with MX Brown Gold Point switches. I uh, I use a gamepad or steering wheel to game, lol. Cherry MX Board 1? Hmm. Where'd you get that? I think I might know the answer to that. Dave Burns says, let's all have a beer. Yeah, let's all have a beer and celebrate Aletta's birthday. Aletta says, once a month I remove all the keycaps and give it a cl good cleaning. Now that's one thing I've always wanted to do is to remove all my keycaps and clean my keyboard. But I'm just, I don't know why, but I'm terrified that I won't remember where the keys go. Is that a thing? Is that? Yeah, can I have some ice in it as well, please? Thank you. You can beat Margaret. <laughs> yeah. Brabant says, bloody good idea, sir. Let me grab one. Yeah, let's all get a drink and salute Aletta and all those that have sailed in her. This is, this is typically British. No. Ice cubes in a pint glass because the beer is warm. Or is that Australian? I don't think it's British. Xbox Gamer says, just take a photo of your keyboard before you remove the key tabs. Ice with beer, awful. Better than warm beer though. Marginally. Got a photo of it now. Got a photo of what, the keyboard? The keyboard. Yeah, but you can't take the keys off of that. Yeah, but you can take it off this and copy that. You can't take them off, they physically don't come off. No, oh, I can get them off. You're not meant to. <laughs> Scottish Stalker says, it must be a UK thing. Kind of. It'll be, it'll be cold in a minute. What's VB mean? VB? It's not VB, so not Australian. Oh, VB. Um, is that Victoria Beer? Something? Or Victoria Beckham? <laughs> Savage. <laughs> Dave Burns says, that's not British, that's watering your beer down. That's American. Now, that's, the, that's coffee. Americans drink that really weird kind of coffee where they just dip a bean in some water for a few seconds. American coffee is like super, super weak. <laughs> Aletta says I like to uh, put the keycaps different all mixed up to mess with my girlfriend. That's pretty <laughs> savage. 
Especially if she's trying to do a bank transfer, that could be that could go wrong. Do, do the number pad around the wrong way and then say, oh, can you transfer that money you owe me? Uh, Gary says, hi Mike and Kath, you must feel better. I'm not sure. <laughs> Click Tech Kev says, uh, dip the glass in water and then put it in the freezer. Hmm, okay. okay. Xbox Gamer says, cheers, I'm drinking Carlsberg right now as well. Matthew Day says, their tea is worse. American tea is worse, really? Don't they have not the same tea bags because people who like to buy English tea bags? Oh yeah, that's true, yeah. People, yeah, English tea bags often get sent here, don't they, yeah. Stuart Stevenson says the Steel Series cleaning kit has a keyboard layout cloth. Now that is genius. That really is genius. Glenn says, coffee pot coffee, the stewed kind, awful. Oh, I used to work in a car dealership and they used to have one of those um, like filter coffee things. Percolator. With, yeah, like a percolator, but had like a two story one. And you'd quite often find that the previous day's coffee was put like on the top, ready for the morning. And then you'd go in and they'd been, been like stewing all night and you'd drink it and it's like, ooh, horrendous. Ooh, not good. Oh, Gary says, you said you weren't drinking before you didn't feel well. No, I didn't. I was, I was feeling okay. I just I had this weird skin infection thing which I took some stupid tablets for, which have made no difference whatsoever. So, they finished. So, I'm starting again. Although I shouldn't really drink and live stream. It generally doesn't mix particularly well. As some of you who've been long time watching members of the channel. Watching members? Viewers, that's the one. Viewers of the channel will notice for sure. Matthew Day says, if you ask for tea, they bring not hot enough pot of water and a tea bag. I get it. I get it. Alessa says, I only drink Earl Grey tea. My beer has to be dark as night and thick as mud. That's Guinness. Stout. That's good for your yes, iron. Good iron levels from that. Medicinal. Uh, Junk from work says, do you think the rumours of the new NVIDIA 3000 series coming in September are true? Uh, yes, I do. And I think that is extremely likely. I would be surprised if it doesn't happen. There's been a lot of rumours at the moment about a 3080 Ti. I saw a fly. Um, yeah, it's very, very likely. Extremely very likely. Matthew Bennett says, I thought you'd have a can of Natch. <laughs> Uh, no, not Nash is not since I was about 15, 16, maybe 17, early teens, let's say. Natch and Cider have not been a friend of mine. Uh, Aidan Bethton says, What is the best sort of webcam to look for? I'm going to be streaming soon. Okay, well, there is actually a fantastic way of getting on to what I'm gonna actually, I want to just look at anyway. So like I said before, I've got three webcams at the moment. One is my laptop one. One is the Logitech C920. And the other one is the Microsoft LifeCam HD 3000. Now, this one is 720p, I believe. That one is 1080p and that one is 720p. That one costs 20 quid. That one come free with a laptop. So guess your own figures on that one. And the C920 was about £30, half price in the sale. They normally retail around about £60, £70. Pounds. So, having said that, let's have a look at what it looks like. Dave Byrne says mute the webcams, Mike. Yeah, I've got the webcam, I've got the Microsoft webcam set up, so unfortunately you are going to hear the audio as it comes directly out of there. So, uh, that's going to make noise. No, should be fine. So there we go, there is the uh, Microsoft HD 3000 webcam and let me know what you think of the audio is. I'm currently about yep, an arm's distance away. The focal thing, it hasn't got autofocus, 
So you do have to find that kind of sweet spot. So if I get closer, you can kind of see where the focal point is. If I get back here, you see I'm uh, I'm very fuzzy. Doesn't look good. But having said that, this is 720p upscaled to 1080p and then streamed out at 30 frames per second. Hopefully, can they hear me, Kath? Is there any? I can't tell if they can hear me or not. I would imagine they should be able to. I can see the, the microphone. Actually, it might be a bit too loud. Yeah, that appears to be working. So the volume actually seems to be okay. Again, I'm pretty far away from it, so if I put it up a little bit closer. So there we go. Can you hear me? Let's put it back over. So I've turned the volume down a little bit now, but yeah, I think it's actually, I think it's fine. The, like I said, the focal point is horrendous. So if I put this up close. So there we go. That is, let me know where the sweet, that's, I would say probably between, that's about a foot away. That's about two foot away there. So I'll say somewhere between one and two foot. That's th about three foot. So I think that's probably where the focal point goes. I'll let you guys be the judge because you can probably see this better than I can. But if you're um, if you're working from home and you're showing someone something, say, well, yeah, I think this is what we should do. I think this is what the design should look like. I'm pretty sure if we make it, people will buy loads of them. And then you show them the uh, the sample. So yeah, there we are. There's the, there's the sample. What do you think? Do people like that? Are they going to want to buy that? Are you going to give these away for free? Possibly. You get the general idea. It's actually that picture is pretty sharp. There's, you can see there's like a level of separation between me and the pen. It does but look. You are making the letters ears bleed. Sorry. Too loud. There we go. Is that better? Where are we at? About fifty percent. Let's try fifty percent. Is that better? Yeah, not bad. <laughs> look, look at all those AirPods. And you can see actually where the. Um, where the camera goes a bit weird because the fish eye. So look how long my finger is. And it's back to normal. Arrow. <laughs> Not bad. Can you tell Emma to hurry up and do a move? Emma, hurry the hell up, do your move, get on with it. We've got places to be, you know. Anyway, so there is that one. So let's now try the, uh, this is the webcam one. So this is the, oh dear. <laughs> This is the, that's going to be too loud. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. So th this is the built-in webcam, which is built into the laptop, which is uh, pretty awful. And that looks, that looks horrendous. Look at it. It's grainy as hell. That's like 480p if you're lucky, isn't it? What's that on? I'm spilling stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> spilling stuff? Jesus, it's so delayed, I saw it after you said Rub it in. It's good for moisturising your head. Anyway, so that's the, the one built into the laptop. Oh dear. Right, let's go for the Logitech cam. cam. This is where it's going to go a bit wrong, I think. Because... There we go. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Hear you, I can see you. So that's the Logitech one. This is a little bit further away, so normally it'd be kind of like this height, but yeah, it's uh, it's not too bad. You can tell that there's definitely, uh, definitely a, a change in the quality of the picture for sure. But the colors look kind of, the Logitech does seem to do a weird thing with kind of like, look at the, the highlights. The highlights are really bad. The whites and all that are kind of really poor. The colors look really off. Like, I got sunburned red face and I just look normal. What? Which actually, probably, actually, yeah, look at the red. That is supposed to be like blood red. That's a bright orange, but it just looks so washed out. It's a really, again, okay, if you like that kind of color, the washed out look, then it's fine. But for what me, I don't like it. Uh, this one is the Logitech C. 920, I had to double check, yeah. Logitech C920, which is actually, at the moment, four times more expensive than the uh, the Microsoft one, which is 
for the money, I think the Microsoft one takes it easily. Of the three, I think it's probably the best all-rounder. The audio is fantastic. <clears throat> Excuse me, the audio you're getting now is through the Lumix camera because the audio through the Logitech is just bloody awful and it just, I can't use, it is unusable in my opinion. Oh, earthquake. Ah! That's enough of that. Silly boy. So you look at the difference in the color now. You can see, or, there's a camera, there we are. You can see the difference in the color. Like this is so much more, I would say natural, but it's not a slightly, it's slightly saturated, I would say. And I've got beer all over the desk. It's never a good look. Anyway. Mm. Bit of aftershave for the latest. How much is the C920? Uh, C920 is, I'm not sure. The last I looked about 75 quid, which to me seems ridiculously expensive. I wouldn't pay it, certainly wouldn't. So, you were here, no, no audio. How much do we buy it for? 30 during, that's, if you're waiting for the prime sales this year, it doesn't look like they're gonna happen in the usual uh, end of June, beginning of July. They're looking to push, pish? They're looking to push them back to possibly September. I heard on the radio this morning, so uh, yeah, definitely. Are due to lack of stock? Uh, no, just because COVID, and obviously they're hoping that by September, it kind of goes into a dip before the Christmas. Uh... So, what are your um, what are your thoughts? I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> so, what are your thoughts on the webcams? I personally, the Logitech is good. It's a nice picture, but the colors are completely crap. The one built into the laptop is usable at best. If you're desperate and you need something, it's built in, it works. But for me, I think the uh, the Microsoft one for 20 quid, like argos.co.uk, 20, what, 19 pounds and 49 pence. Plus if you want next day delivery, it's only three pounds 95 which for me is, yeah, fantastic. Especially in this COVID crisis where everyone is really, really taking the mickey with prices. So yeah, I think it works out really well. Gamer7138 says, fair enough, that's uh, not great for the quality. If I spent 80 pounds on it, I'd expect good color. For sure, definitely. If you, if you look at the prices, the C920, which has always been the kind of the go-to um, streamers webcam, it's because most streamers have a very small window kind of in the bottom corner of the stream. So you never see it at 1080p and you don't notice the color inaccuracies. Generally they have kind of like the green screen technology going on so it looks a bit fuzzy anyway. So for just actually capturing an image, it's fine. But if you actually want to use it in the real world to communicate, to use Zoom, to speak to people at work, all that kind of home collaboration stuff that's got going on, you need it to be a little bit better quality, in my in my opinion. And I think the Microsoft one actually does the job. I really do. And it's cheaper, so you get to save the money that you could have spent on beer. But also, can you use a camera, <coughs> camera, camera and put in a... Yeah, if you use... Um, yeah, if you use camel, 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 you can put in a... Um, yeah, three camels or camel, camel, camel .com. You can actually set up a um, email so that when a device on Amazon, be it webcam, laptop, Microsoft keyboard, Carlsberg, whatever it is, uh, one of those things, sorry, copy. copyright strike. Um, yeah, if you if you set an alert, as soon as it drops beneath a certain threshold, you'll get an email come through and then you can order it. Camel, 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 very good. If you haven't used it before, you certainly should consider it. Uh, Aidan Bufton says, out of stock in Argos for me, Dan. You might find, if it says it's out of stock, that might be for store collection. If you put for home delivery, you may still be able to get it. That's what I did. Uh, Brabant says, that's nuts. Wonder why the C920 and the C922 are the same price. The, yeah, the 922 is supposed to be a lot better. I've not tried it, but I would quite like to try that actually. I'm not buying one at today's prices. No, sir. 
Aidan Bufton says, sadly, it's for delivery and in store. Well, that's a shame. Mind you, it is the weekend, so I would imagine they'll probably get stocks in on Tuesday or Wednesday now because of the bank holiday. So definitely check back. I'm, I'm sure they will be back in stock. They have been selling them at that sort of price for a while now, which is, which is quite refreshing to see. They also sell the, uh, the C270, which is awful. But it is a webcam and it's about the same price. And for some reason, my YouTube studio has crashed again. Oh, is anyone else having problems with YouTube today? Is it just me? I've just literally done a Windows update on this before I started uh, tonight's stream. So maybe it's that. And talking of uh, videos and streams and stuff, what have we done this week? So we did the Facebook Rooms. Hopefully some of you have been using Facebook Rooms to chat to each other. And uh, hopefully you haven't been too plagued by those new bloody avatars, which are horrendous. <sighs> what is it with avatars? I hate avatars. Hate it. Absolutely hate it. Anyway. Welcome to the trouble of designing one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, disable Cortana. Hopefully, again, some of you may have found that useful. It's actually had quite a lot of use, so it looks like quite a few people have enjoyed it. The Hacky Moon AirPods, they were a bit different. Um, I... I kind of wish I'd got the pink ones now for some reason. I don't know why. After seeing the video, I kind of like, yeah, the pink ones actually look pretty cool. I wouldn't wear them. I'd give them to Calf or Angel, but yeah, they look good. Uh, the right-click menu, that was cool. I love that. And then that kind of harps back to my keyboard not having a hardware calculator button. So now you can use that. You can go into the registry and you can actually add additional things to your right-click context menu in Windows. So now like when you right-click, and you can choose either refresh or your resolution for your windows. You can actually add in stuff, programs, that kind of thing. Very, very useful. And actually really easy to do. Gamer7138 says, um, it is a corporate scam with ad revenue for creators, etc. but it's so widely used today, you can't get away. Sadly, even though it doesn't work very well. Yeah. That is kind of right. Kev says, I started making an avatar, but realized doing so made me look a fool. Good job I came to my senses. Well done, Kev. Well done, you, Kev. I did one, and I... And he didn't come it, to his senses. I didn't come to my senses. I was about to go to bed last night. He was very happy. And I was like, Kev, look, look what I made, look. <laughs> then it says, next, and it's like, oh, crap. That's done it for a week. So that is going to be my profile picture for a week. So if you want to see how, how bad it is, you can find us on uh, Facebook, but don't send me a message because I won't answer it. <laughs> It'll just have an automatic reply saying, please contact us on email or Discord. That's your unboxing oh, yeah. page. Kev okay, again says, the right-click one took me back to my win 98 days where I used to play with the registry all the time. Perfect. He says, I saw your avatar, Ming the Merciless springs to mind. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it does. Ming. Ming. Am I minging? <laughs> okay, so I think that's going to pretty much wrap this one up. It's, we're in a really weird time at the moment where we've got so much new stuff due, like the B550 motherboards, the new 4000 series processors, all these things which are going to be coming out soon. And it's really different. Everyone's like on the fence. Should I buy a B450? Should I buy, should I wait for a B550? Should I get a bargain on an X470? And until those boards actually release and we've got physical hard prices on what they're gonna cost, it's difficult to know. I am so on the fence. I was really, really waiting for the X570 Tomahawk. And that is a board that I've had my eyes on for a long, long time. But then I saw the price of it, 220 pounds here in the UK on pre-order. 220 pounds for a bloody MSI Tomahawk. Oh, cars for this. I have bought a car for less than that. It seems like a lot of money for what it is. It's a B550, uh, sorry, X570. Yes, it is like the high-end board, but it still seems really expensive. I think I'd rather go for the Prime P from uh, Asus. At least it's been around a while, we know what to expect. It's a good board, solid board, really good VRMs. The Tom Hawk's gonna have good VRMs, we've seen that already. But what's the longevity going to be like? We don't know. It's still an unknown quantity. And it is, what, uh, over a year old, really, behind the rest of the comp competition. So 
all the others have had that long to kind of mature and get BOSS updates to get rid of any instabilities. So I don't know if the X570 Tomahawk is actually going to do very well at all. Let me know what you think about it. I'm, uh, I'm interested to see what your thoughts are. ClickTech says, I'm going to stick with my X470 and uh, 2700X for now. At the moment, realistically, there isn't any justifiable reason which would be kind of, you need to upgrade. That's a very good platform. Um, you've now got options going forward into the 3000 series and 4000 series potentially. Um, the 2700X is still a very, very quick CPU. Loads of cores, loads of threads. Even if you did upgrade to, well, realistically, what would you upgrade to from a 2700X? You'd have to get a, a real perceivable jump in speed. Realistically, you're gonna have to go 3800X or 3900X to see a, a tangible, noticeable improvement. Possibly with that, you might need faster RAM, potentially another motherboard to, to really get the best out of it because you, the X470 isn't gonna support those higher memory speeds. Is it worth it? Probably not, probably not, which is really sad. And it is because I've got money burning a hole in my pocket, waiting, just waiting for the perfect thing to buy, but it doesn't seem to be happening. I am quite gutted, I've got to be honest with you. They want to see that camera. What's that? Somebody wants to see the camera you're filming on. How can I do that? With a webcam, if I don't sit there. Oh right, yeah, okay, good point. <laughs> so somebody wants to see the camera that we're filming on for some reason. Who was it? Somebody. Paul Baker. Uh, can you show the main camera you're using? Yeah, it's a it's a Logitech. Sorry, Logitech is not. It's a Panasonic Lumix G80, which is basically the same as a G85 in America, and essentially it's like a G7, but it's got a uh, in-body stabilization. Don't move, Gaff. Right, let's. Uh, which camera should I? Let's do the Log. Let's do the um, the Microsoft one, because I can actually probably still use the microphone. And hopefully there's nothing incriminating in the way. No, there isn't. So, which button do I use for that? Seven, I think. Oh no, I haven't set it up, have I? Dipstick. Microsoft webcam. Whoa, there we go. So there we go. There you can see. There it is, the camera. And that's what it looks like. That's what I look at. And there's my uh, my notes up there on what videos I've done. And the buttons that I have to press on my camera. And there's my man bra. You didn't see that. But there's the camera, so you can see you've got the HDMI coming out the side of it. And you can tell it's the one I'm using because if you look over to there, see that bit there? That's the live feed. That's what I see to see what's going on. And there's a delay, so if I go like that. Sorry. Sometimes. Anyway, you get the idea. So there's the camera on a little mini tripod from newer. That's a great little tripod, actually. And we're using the Boya BY-M1 Lavellier Microfing. It's pretty good. So yeah, that's the setup. And there it is. Oh my god, there's the ABS stream. Inception, eat your heart out. Now I've lost my screen. There we go. Ah, oh dear. Technology, what a wonderful thing. Calf can sit down now. Oh, Kath is still on you. I don't know why I looked at that. So she looked. She did look. There is a massive delay. Oh, there we go. Matthew Day is give us a two pound super chat now. For those of you who do not know what is going on, and uh, I don't know what's going on half the time, but currently, if you send us a super chat, it triggers the RGB disco ball, which is triggered through IFTTTT. And if you want to know how to set up that for yourself, uh, there is a video, so just type in IFTTT on our YouTube channel and you can see how I did it. Actually really simple to do, you can do it with any of your smart plugs, so you can set various triggers to send them on and off. Um, yeah, and as Matthew says, nobody made it flash tonight. Sad times. It's after payday, so everyone's skin. And also there is a global pandemic going on, which is kind of bad as well. But thank you very much, Matthew Day. Appreciate. Um, Mark Richardson says, still on a 4690K here, waiting for 550s. That is pretty old school now, but still does the job. And ultimately, if your PC still does the job that you want it to do, do you need to change it? If you've got loads of money or you enjoy it, it's a hobby, 
do it. If you don't have the money and it does what it does, just leave it as it is. Oh, here we go. Matthew Bennett's chucked in a fiver for the pen. <laughs> you can have a pen for a fiver. Those pens are actually, no, actually, no, you can't have those pens because they were a gift from our daughter. Wasn't it? Was it Angel that bought those, wasn't it? Yeah, just check in. Angel bought those for us as a Christmas present. There's one for my channel, Mike's Unboxing, and there's also one for Kath's channel, which is ShopSmart. And Skystalker is also says pandemic. Bah. And let's give us 10 Canadian dollars. Thank you very much. Kath's done that as well. Looks like Kath's wearing a mini skirt tonight. She's got my Mike's Unboxing t-shirt on, which like a dress. It, it fits her like a dress. So it looks like she hasn't got any um, pants on. That's American pants. Hot pants. <laughs> and, <laughs> and click take Kev. He says, Flash, ah, savior of the universe. And let's give us two UK pounds. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, that tastes so good. So good. <whistles> Xbox Gamer says, I watched one of your reviews on the Asus Tough Gaming X570 Plus. Uh, from memory, you said that you picked it up for about £165. I believe it is. Uh, I can't seem to get it for that price. Cheapest I've seen it is £189.99. Yes, well, I was lucky enough to have the foresight of buying it before the pandemic. So, I think I bought it in... When did I do my taxes? Yeah, I think I bought it... Did I buy it before Christmas? Was that Black My Black? Asus X570, I'm not too sure. Yeah. I think it was before Christmas I bought it. I'm pretty sure it was November, December time. But yeah, I bought it before the pandemic, so that was uh, it was all good. Brab says, nice called Carlsberg. Yeah, yes. Happy days. Uh, Brian says, MSI MPG X570 Gaming Plus, pretty solid board, right? Um, kind of. It gets slated because the VRMs aren't great. It does get rather toasty. But having said that, it depends what chip you're putting on it. If you're putting on a 3950, then yeah, it's going to get warm. And if you haven't got sufficient cooling, it's going to get hella warm. And it isn't going to perform as well as it should. And it will fail some tests when you go into hardcore overclocking. But if you're using a modest processor and you've got some decent cooling, it will run happily. Not ideally, but it will run. Which is a shame because the, uh, the MPG X570 Gaming Plus and the... What's the next one up from that? Can't think what it is now. I forget the, um, the tiering of the MSI boards. Gaming Plus, what's after that? Got the Pro A, Gaming Plus, something else. No, can't think of it. Anyway, yeah, it's not not bad, bad, but it's not great. Carbon. carbon, that might be the one. Thank you. You wanted the carbon one, didn't you? I did. I really wanted the carbon board, but they're so expensive now. It's ridiculous. So, yeah, that is pretty much where we're at. Everyone is kind of stuck in limbo. What do you buy? If there's a $100 price drop, which was announced on Friday for the 3900X, what is that going to have an effect on? We've already seen the Ryzen 5 3600 drop to about 140 in the UK, 144 that sort of price, which I think I mentioned already earlier. It's a really, really, really difficult time to make a decision. At least, realistically, you can count Intel out of the equation, which makes life a little bit easier. Not a lot easier, but it still makes it slightly easier because the kind of where I would aim at, the Ryzen 5 3600 or equivalent is the uh, 10600, which is about $270, which is going to equate to about £260 for some bizarre reason. So it's over £100 dearer than the Ryzen 5 3600 and is virtually the same price as a 3700X. So there's no point in buying Intel at all. Realistically, even saying that, the the one thing that I would have had kind of in the back of my mind would be Intel QuickSync for um, Adobe Premiere. 
but now that they've included the GPU rendering, which works really, really well, don't need it. It's not necessary. So yeah, Intel are screwed, at least as far as I'm concerned. It's really annoying. I want to build a PC. I really want to build a PC, but I want to make it worthwhile. I want to make it interesting, and I don't want to spunk a load of cash unnecessarily, understandably. You know me, that's what I'm all about. But I can't do it, and it's really upsetting me. I've actually got a, a PC in the front room, which is a tiny little ITX PC with a really old processor, and I really need to get a shot of it and replace it with something half decent. But there's just nothing on the market which floats my boat enough to actually go and build it. Lucas Jr. says, hi, Mike. Hi, Lucas Jr., how you doing? Glad you could join us. Uh, John Grammaticus says, the old B450 carbon Wi-Fi is a good board. It, it is, and if I was going to be going down the B450 route at this present time, the Carbon would be the one I'd go for. Addressable RGB, really nice looks, uh, built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, really, really stable board, excellent VRMs. There's very, very little to dislike about it. The only thing I would say I don't like about it is some of the memory support. The memory support isn't fantastic. I think it goes up to 4133, which is... Totally understandable, it's B450, it's not really meant to go that high. Uh, 34, 33, 34, 36, uh, sorry, 34, 66 is probably about where you'd normally be looking for a B450 chipset. So it's not, it's not bad. But I'm still waiting for something to come along and really like rock me and say, you need to buy me. And hopefully it's an MSI board so I can finally get all my MSI stuff synchronized in the back there. That would be great. Paul said thank you for showing the camera, by the way. Oh, okay. No problem. No problem, Paul. <laughs> Thomas Reddick says, before December, when everything goes puff, China, the country that keeps on giving. Yeah. Coronavirus, the only thing from China which has actually lasted more than a few months. Is that potentially political? Am I going to get demonetized for that? Nah, I'll be fine. <laughs> Uh, Mungo Blakey says the Intel uh, 10400F is great value. I oh, haven't seen that. I really do. <coughs> I suppose I should look into the Intel stuff more, but it generally just doesn't interest me enough to kind of make me think. Yeah, I, I really want to build an Intel system because, as far as I can tell at the moment, there aren't any lower end or mid range boards on the Intel uh, 10th gen platform yet. I think it's the Z490, and that's it at the moment, isn't it? It's actually available in the shops. Uh, Gamer7138 says, I bought the MSI B450 Pro Max you reviewed, uh, but when I moved back to the student housing, I got off internet to Wi-Fi. What is a good PCIe card to use? To be honest with you, I'd go with a USB one. Get a decent USB dongle, preferably a branded one, and a, a small extension cable, Run the extension cable up away from your PC a little bit. And if you're in student digs or whatever, just stick it to the wall with some gaffer tape. And then you can move it around to get the best Wi-Fi signal. The built-in PCIe ones, they sometimes come with an external antenna, which you can move around. But generally, they tend not to. So definitely get a USB extension. Get a Wi-Fi dongle or USB, much cheaper as well. And then depending where the Wi-Fi hotspot is for your uh, rooms or dorm or whatever it is, you can find where your signal's best and then make it much more reliable. That's what I would do. Alexa says, get an X570 Unify, Mike. I refuse to, being that it's probably twice the price of what my processor is. It would look nice, though. Gamer7139 says, demonetization incoming. Uh, John Gramatica says, the Zen 2 BIOS update sorts out the memory on the carbon. All right, that's interesting. I might have to relook at the carbon. Again, we're so, we're like, that they haven't close. Been released yet. No, the B550s haven't been released, so until they've actually landed, tested, all that sort of stuff, we think, we really don't know what's going to go on. Because we contact MSI about that. We? Yeah, we actually, yeah, we did contact MSI directly to say, like, can you please give us an idea of when your boards are likely to hit the shelves? Um, if you can't send me one for review, just tell me when they're going to be out on the day, and I'll pre-order them. But we haven't heard anything yet.
Matthew Bennett says the um, 10th Gen 400 or 10th 10, 10 400 is priced at around 170 pounds. That's probably horrible for people. Sorry, <laughs> it's horrible for me. 170 pounds, uh, six core, 12 thread. So that's within kind of pissing distance, isn't it, of the Ryzen 5 3600, which isn't bad. Captain's giving me the look. You're allowed to say pissing. Pissing's okay. That doesn't demonetize you. Oh yeah, because they're in charge of in America, so it's not too bad, is it, in America? America, pissing's fine. You're allowed to say that. Can you say pissing in church in America? If you can say pissing in church, then it's fine, I'm sure. I think it's if you say pissing too many times, it gets they get upset. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll stop pissing and saying it. Uh, ben Shields says hi. Hi Ben. Uh, Ricardo says I'll wait if Aorus makes a AX version of the B550. Right now there's an ITX version of the motherboard. Colin Wicker says coming out on the 3rd of June. I hope so. I hope so. Gamer7137 said, Mike, you already said something political, so demonetization is already incoming. Oh, bulls. Digital Demonic Davros. I like that. Digital Demonic Davros. That's a great name and also a great avatar. Well done. Uh, they have B550 boards on Gigabyte website and there is an ITX. Yeah, I did look today at the... Uh, actually, let's have a quick look at the ASUS website. Uh, not Azu, sorry, Azrock. That's the one. Close. And uh, where are we? Azrock B550. God, I have become bloody. What's his face? Lyle. Lyle. <laughs> Don't I'll do the voice? <laughs> they made me do the voice. Right, which button have I got to press to do the desktop thing? Oh, yeah. Uh, da -da -da -da. Happy birthday to a letter. Okay, that should work. Has that worked? Hey, that worked. Okay, so B550. So this is where realistically we probably want to be aiming for the B550 Tai Chi. That is a crazy ass looking board and no mistake. But this is where I kind of, I start to lose my faith in what the hell is going on. Because the B550 chipset and the well the 50 chipset throughout time immemorial has always been the kind of mid-range budget builders thing. The Tai Chi B550 that looks like a high-end board. Does it or does it not? Like it's almost a bit skeleton watchy. Unless yeah, it looks like a skeleton watch. There's so much gone into the design on that, and look at the plastic on it. It is. Plastic everywhere, absolutely everywhere. Let's look at the I.O. Because the I.O. is pretty important. So we've got USB 3.2. We've got USB 3.2 Type-C. We've got a speed if for optical. We've got all these ports for audio, which is pretty cool. Um, I imagine that's going to be 2.5 gigahertz gigabit internet. I don't know for sure, but I would assume it is. A couple of normal USBs there. A couple more 3.1s. The one at the bottom, <clears throat> that one is going to be, with the box around it, is going to be your uh, BIOS flashback. Because you've got your clear CMOS button and you've got your BIOS flashback button. So as you can see, there's a square around there. And there's a square around there. So that means that's your BIOS uh, USB button and flashing port. You've got a display port and HDMI, which are going to be basically useless to anybody. But anyway, you might get a... 4000 Remoir chip on there, you never know. But it just seems to me that that is a massively, massively overspect what is effectively a budget board. Support wise, you've got 16 phase power design, so that's eight phases doubled. I'm gonna hedge bets on that. Just looking, well, you can't really see what's going on, but I would say it's gonna be doubled. I would be amazed if it wasn't. Uh, supports DDR4733 OC, so we're still not quite getting to the 5 gigahertz, but getting closer all the time. 308 Crossfire X, why, God, why? Uh, and the Hymic audio, which is pretty decent, and the ALC uh, 12, 
20 audio codec, which is pretty decent. Eight SATA 3s, one Hyper M.2, so that's Gen 4 times 4, one Ultra M.2, so that's going to be PCIe Gen 3 times 4, and then you've got your SATA 3s as well, and a ton of, oh yeah, Intel 2.5 gig LAN, as I thought, and also the Wi Fi. Oh, of course, yeah, we've got the Wi Fi antennas up here. So that is a pretty badass looking board, isn't it? I think it's pretty safe to say. So this is going to be an interesting part because I've not seen this yet, but let's look at support and we'll look at BIOS and there's nothing. Download section, let's see if there is a BIOS. Someone stop me if you see BIOS. So no, they're not showing BIOS. Uh, let's try it all. So I want to see what chips are supported in the BIOS. They've not put a... Um, what's the thing I'm looking for? Hardware compatibility, that's the one. They haven't put hardware compatibility, have they? Did I see that there either? No, so we've got no hardware compatibility listing at the moment at all. I don't think it's going to be in the manual. Let's see, overview, let's say what, that does look a very, very pretty board though, doesn't it? That does look nice. Although I'm not too sure about the kind of bronze effect on there, or is that copper? What do you say that is, calf copper or bronze? It looks different on my phone. I think that's probably, think that's copper, it looks like brushed aluminium, but in a kind of, almost like a brown. I'd imagine it's supposed to rip off of those cogs there. Anyway, you get the idea. So that is that is going to be like your high-end board. So if we go to uh, products and we go to motherboards, and let's look at some B550s. Zippity doo da, zippity day. My oh my, why are these so bloody expensive? Okay, said hi, and he thinks these boards don't make sense to people who already have a B450 motherboard. They don't. He's absolutely right. Okay, so the ear here, ear, here it is. So here's the range. So we got some crazy. How many is that? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So that's coming soon. But twelve motherboards in a product stack. That's insane. I suppose technically it's six because there are kind of micro ATX versions and then full size ATX versions. So I suppose that is a consideration. Whole week of videos being released at two o'clock. What's that? that yeah. Whole week. Yeah, an entire week's worth of videos all released at, at two o'clock. At two o'clock in the afternoon by our American brethren. So essentially, if you look at just looking at the pictures there, you can kind of tell what's going on there. So the Pro 4 and the HDV are essentially the same board. Whereas the previously, the HDV was kind of like the very low end board, and then the Pro 4 was slightly uprated. It does look like it's slightly uprated by the cooler. So that's the micro ATX, is there? Yeah, let's look at the full size board. See, where is the entry level? Where it. Yeah, there doesn't seem to be an HDV in the full size ATX, which is odd. So Pro 4 looks like it's going to be the entry level ATX from what I can see there. So let's have a look at that. So this is the one that's going to make sense to most people. Now actually immediately, I really like the look of that board. But immediately I can tell what the problem is and it's going to be the I.O. The I.O. is going to suck balls. Yeah. Five USBs plus a USB type C. So not unworkable, but okay. A, uh, a blank board on the back for the Wi-Fi, which is not going to be included. So maybe they will in some regions, but that is pretty woeful. It really is. Three channels for audio. Again, it's doable. A lot of people tend to use USB DAC, so it isn't the end of the world. And looking at the support, so we've got the same memory support. So 4733OC, which you probably imagine is going to be through the range. So we've got the one PCIe 416, a 316 piece and two 3.0s times one, blah, 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 yada, 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 normal sort of stuff. 
and eight phase power power eight phase power design. So let's take a closer look at this because I don't believe that for a minute. So we can't really see what's going on, but by the look of it, those to me look like doublers in that top corner. I don't know if you guys can quite make it out. I would point to it, but that makes no sense whatsoever to you. But there's two chokes there, and above those two chokes are two chips. So where it says news at the top of the screen, if you look below there, directly below there, you've got two little chips next to that choke. So those, I would say, are going to be doublers. So I would imagine that this is going to be a four-phase VRM. I would be surprised if it isn't, because it looks pretty much identical to the previous Pro 4, which was a four phase also. And pretty much the cooling and everything looks to be pretty much the same as the previous Pro 4. We've got a addressable RGB in the top corner here. The four RAM slots, which is the usual deal. Got your stack of USBs there. And towards the bottom, we've got plenty of fan headers, which is always a good thing with ASRock boards. And there's another addressable RGB and a standard RGB at the bottom. So pretty much the usual deal. Nice uh, to see the M.2 armor being included straight out the gate. Unfortunately, it is directly below the graphics card, which is not ideal. Really, you'd want to have that above the graphics card just to try and keep it away from that hot zone. But still, it's nice to have it in one way, shape or another. But I think for most people, that is going to be the board that's going to make sense if there is such a thing in this crazy, crazy world at the moment. So we've got the Tai Chi we've seen. Oh, it's gone into the other stuff now. So where are we? B B B B five fifty. Shoot. Sure. Said appreciate the boots and other content. Bless you. That was very kind. Where is the B five fifty? Let's have a look at the Velocita. Strange name, but quite a funky looking board. Now a lot of the um, what's this the like the pro gamer range, isn't it? I'm trying to think what they called it before, but. They actually have uh, collaborated with a couple of case manufacturers and other things to actually have matching branding. So you can actually get a in-win case which follows on with this branding. So here again, we've got 14 power phase design, DigiPower DMOS, same memory support, DDR4 4733 on an OC, and pretty much the same standard uh, Phantom Gaming. Phantom Gaming, that is a brand, that's like FG, Phantom Gaming. So 2.5 gigahertz LAN, doesn't say whether it's Intel or not. I'd imagine it probably isn't at this kind of level. Could be though. Again, looks uh, looks pretty decent. And the IO actually looks quite nice on there as well. Because you've got at least eight USBs by the look of it there. So seven plus a uh, type C. Got a couple of holes there for the, the um, Wi-Fi, which again is probably optional depending on which country you're in. Keyboard and mouse port, there's a bit of a throwback. But some, uh, some nice looking lighting on there. Although I'm not a big fan of these accent colours actually printed onto the motherboard. So I guess because it is part of the Phantom Gaming range, you'd expect that kind of colour. But yeah, it doesn't really do a great deal for me, if I'm honest. So anyway, you get the idea. Steel Legend is uh, going to be prob probably where we're looking at. And look at the similarities between the B550 and the X570. Between those two boards, not a great deal of difference, is there? Very, very similar indeed. So the B550 Steel Legend is going to be, uh, I can imagine this being a massive seller. And this one they've done better because we've got the MTOP2 armor above the graphics card slot, which is fantastic news. And looks like the, yeah, it's got the M.2 Wi-Fi, which if I get a closer look at that, the M.2 Wi-Fi is kind of centralized on the board here. So you can plug in your M.2 Wi-Fi, then you can route up the cables into this back channel and then have your antennas on the back. So it looks like the Wi-Fi will be an option. Nice to see in this bottom corner, we've got the uh, the debug LEDs, which is starting to make more of a reappearance on boards these days. And I suppose because a lot of the, uh, the boards are having issues, having a BIOS feedback kind of representation makes debugging and fault finding so much easier. But that actually looks like a nice board. There's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of capacitors there. Be interested to see what the chokes are like, but unfortunately they're all covered up. Um, we're slightly limited on power delivery because we've only got an eight and a four. Whereas most of the other higher end boards are two lots of eight. 
and the fact that we haven't got an active chipset fan is a good sign but also a bad sign because it means it's not doing as much as the previous one a lot of the chipset duties have now been <coughs> excuse me a lot of the chipset duties have been handed off now to the cpu Ugh. sorry beer time but again i'm not too sure what's going on here with this still legend thing is that rgb in there or is that color stamped on i would imagine that's going to be rgb following on from there but we don't know for sure a little bit of too much plastic going on for my liking as much as these covers and that are all good fun and they look nice uh, again dual m.2 armor there so one at the bottom and one in the middle but there's uh, there's there's a lot of plastic going on especially this plastic down the side where if anything that's going to be a pain in the ass especially if you're building a slightly more budget oriented system and you've got the PCI Express blanking plates that you've got to bend out with the, all that plastic in the way you're going to have no chance so it's going to be taking the motherboard out or hacking it to pieces so yeah going to have to be careful on that but yeah be interesting to see what these uh, these chokes are like in the phases but still very nice looking board so maybe one we're going to have to keep a lookout for anyway that's enough of that let's go back to the real world hey hello <laughs> So, what do you reckon? As far as ASRock goes, there's going to be a lot of choices there. There is going to be another model as well, the ITX one, which we've not seen yet. But it's pretty much going to be the same as the B450 Fatality, I would imagine. I can't imagine there being much different because there physically isn't a lot more room to do anything with it. But overall, not too bad. I'm, uh, I'm kind of hopeful that it's going to turn out all right and we're going to get some decent stuff. But... Until it's reviewed, until we've actually had it and used it and see what the initial boss is and stuff like that are like. Don't forget, this is an entirely new kind of chipset design. The first generation of Ryzen chips were absolutely horrendous. It took us ages to get stable biases and to iron out all the kinks in the armour. But hopefully it'll be okay. So, that is going to wrap things up for tonight, I think. I think... Nice oh, I've got to answer someone's question. Who's, sorry? Nav, what question was that? Where is it? Nav. Right, four, Appreciate the vids, love the content. No dying, man. Oh, okay, going down. Angel Churchill says hello. Hello, Angel. Mum says hello. <laughs> Nav, okay. So, I'm building a computer and thinking of getting the uh, X570 Tough Gaming. I have a 3900X. Uh, you think I should wait for the B550? Sorry if you already answered. Truthfully, I would probably go with the X570. For a 3900X, is going to require some uh, some decent VRMs. And fortunately for you, the Tough Gaming does have those VRMs. And I have used that board and still use that board on a daily basis. And I can wholeheartedly recommend it. I had a few issues to start with with RAM. And it seems other people are having that as well. But with the current BIOS update and some decent RAM in there... It's all running really nicely, so yeah, I would uh, thoroughly recommend it. So, yes, definitely going to wrap things up now. So thank you all so much for joining us on your Saturday evening. Hopefully uh, you've enjoyed the stream tonight. If you have, do me a favour before you uh, clock out. Smash the like button, share the video with your friends and family and all that kind of stuff. And if you haven't subscribed already, then click, maybe click on the subscribe button and the chime icon and be notified of future video releases. If you feel that way inclined what else can you be doing it's not a lot else on a saturday night these days in lockdown territory so give it a go you never know you might like it so thanks to those who uh generated income for me tonight on the super chats and we do appreciate it and no doubt youtube and google will appreciate their cut also anything else you want to say calf anything i've forgotten to say oh i know i've forgotten to say don't forget if you want a t-shirt mike's unboxing t-shirt like this one uh if you want to go over to patreon you can any backers with a £10 pledge or more a month uh, will get a t-shirt sent to them in the size of their choice. Or if you want to, you can donate it to another person, whatever you want to do. I don't care. Whatever it is, we'll do it and we'll send it out to you. And that will be your reward for helping us grow the channel. So there we go. Um, yeah, I'm rittering on now. So thank you all so much for joining us. Smash the like button and we'll catch you again in another video really soon. Probably tomorrow, I think. Yeah. Calf's look at me like, yeah, whatever. 
Actually, uh, I've, video, not a I've only just uploaded it, so it might be a stream tomorrow night. So yeah, stick around. We might do a stream tomorrow night. If you're subscribed and you've got the channel icon smashed, you'll get notified, hopefully. And if you're not, uh, jump on our Discord, and whenever there's a video released, the Discord will let you know as well. So I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next live stream. Thanks for watching. Good night.